I'm Zor. <clears throat> Welcome to UNU Zor Education. Um, today we will talk about equations. This is the problem number one. And uh, it's not really a, a problem. It's, it's a very easy exercise, but I would like to use it as an opportunity to talk about invariant transformations, because they are in the heart of any kind of equations uh, solving. So, the first problem um, contains actually three equations, which I put down here, and uh, I'll talk about each of them separately. And again, they're very easy, uh, and uh, it's not really for solving these equations um, that I'm talking about this. It's just to illustrate that invariant transformations are extremely important, and how to properly um, apply them. Um, basically, this is all about it. Okay, equation number one, let me put it here, 2 times x plus 4 minus 10 equals 0. Okay, so, as you know, invariant transformations can be applied <coughs> to both sides of equation, and because these transformations are invariant, they do not change the solutions of the equation. So instead of using uh, solving original equation, we can solve transformed equation without any um, uh, lost or, or, or gained uh, solutions. Now, obviously, what kind of invariant transformations can be applied to this? So I will just use this language of invariant transformations to explain how to solve this equation. Okay, the first invariant transformation is transformation T, which converts anything into anything plus 10. Now, why is this transformation invariant? Because it always has an inverse transformation, and it's one-to-one -one correspondence between an argument and a function in this particular case. So, if I apply this transformation to both sides of the equation, I will get 2 times x plus 4 minus 10 plus 10 equals 0 plus 10, which I can obviously um, reduce using um, uh, associative law of addition. Let's just be specific in this particular case, because this is one um, argument minus another plus another, but we can change the sequence, we can use um, the result of the, uh, the, the latest uh, addition and, and then apply it to the left one. So basically, uh, to properly, um, to put it on a, a, on a proper rigorous basis, if you wish, I can say that I can change this and I can put parentheses around latest. That's using the associative law. We have to understand that it's not just, you know, from the blue or, or whatever. There is an associative law of addition which we can use this. Equals to, in this case, 0 plus 10 is calculated as 10. And since I put parentheses around it, I can um, execute this first, which obviously reduces to 0, and I have 2 times x plus 4 equals 10. Okay. We use an invariant transformation and associative law of addition to get to this. Next invariant transformation, which converts any number into this number divided by 2. Now, is this transformation invariant? Yes, because there is always the reverse one um, that's the multiplication by 2. And as you understand, um, division is always invariant as long as um, divisor is not equal to 0. Okay? So, what do we do in this particular case? Okay, let's divide it by 2. We get 2 times x plus 4 
divided by 2 is equal to 10 divided by 2. Okay. I'll continue here. Now what do we do? Well, what we can do here is two things. We can use the commutative law of multiplication and transfer these, which will give us x plus 4 times 2 divided by 2 equals to 5. I've divided directly. And now, again, since division is actually a multiplication, as you remember, so basically um, any multiplication by, by, by an inverse number. So in this particular case, we can use the same type of, as before. We can use associative law of uh, uh, multiplication and put parentheses around this. So 2 divided by 2 gives us 1, and 1 multiplied by x plus 4 will be x plus 4 equals to 5. And, obviously, the next invariant transformation would be to subtract 4 from those sets. x plus 4 minus 4 equals to 5 minus 4. Again, using associative law, I put parentheses around it. So I will get x equals to 1. Now, this is a solution. Okay, question number one, do I have to check this solution? Well, to tell you the truth, checking is always a good thing to do. In this case, however, it's not really mandatory. It's, it's a good thing to do, but it's not mandatory. Why? Because every transformation which we did, we did three transformations here, all of them are invariant. So, considering these are invariant transformations, we did not lose any solutions, and we did not gain any new solutions, which are not really uh, solutions to original equation. That's why, in this particular case, it's not mandatory, just a desirable action to do the checking. Well, and if you do the checking, we will put x equals 1, it will be 5, times 2, 10, minus 10, 0, everything is fine. Okay, so I went to really very, very small details of how to solve this particular equation as a demonstration of what actually is happening behind very simple rule like, okay, we can transfer 10 into the right side of the equation with a changed sign. This is just a very fast thing, and then we, we have 2 times x plus 4 equals to 10 immediately. Then let's divide both sides by, by 2, and let's uh, subtract 4. So basically this is exactly what we have done, um, but we did it in more details to show that there is some theoretical background for all these uh, seemingly obvious rules. Okay, so let's do the next one hopefully much faster than this one. Um, and again, all of these are no more than, than illustrative examples of how to use um, invariant transformation. It's not like difficult equations which, which I'm trying to solve. All right, so the next one will be x plus 4 divided by 2 minus 10 equals to 0. Okay, I'll do it faster now. First transformation, obviously, is we transform by adding 10. That's the transformation. Okay, what we get is x plus, x plus 4. divided by 2 equals 10. I immediately put the result, obviously. Minus 10 plus 10 will be 0, and plus 10 on the right side will be 10. Next transformation is multiplication by 2. Invariant transformation, because the multiplication by anything not equal to 0 is invariant. So I will have x plus 4 divided by 2 multiplied by 4, um, by 2, would be x plus 4, and this is equal to 20. Correct? I multiply by 2, right. And the next, the third transformation is I subtract 4 from both sides, and I will get x equals to 16, 
not necessary, not mandatory, but still a good thing to do. Checking 16 plus 4, 20 divided by 2, 10 minus 10, 0, everything is fine. Okay, that's the problem number 2. And problem number 3, the equation number 3, I should really say, just a little bit more writing. x plus 4 divided by 2 minus 10 multiplied by x plus 1 equals 0. Okay. Now, there are many ways to solve this particular equation. Probably the best way is first simplify the left part. And simplification is as follows. If we will divide x plus 4 by 2 separately, x and 4, we are using a distributive law of um, uh, multiplication and addition. In this case, it's division. Uh, so the distributive law says that this is equal to x divided by 2 plus 4 divided by 2. That's the distributive law. Again, we have to understand that simple rules have their theoretical foundation. Here, the same thing, distributive law of multiplication versus addition. So it's 10 times x uh, minus 10 equals to 0. Next, next we obviously have to use the commutative and associative laws to change things around and put them together. So, what I will have x, uh, what I will have is the following. x divided by 2 minus 10x. 4 divided by 2 is 2 minus 10 equals 0. Now, now we can do the transformation. Very easy transformation. T, we multiply by 2. Y by 2, just to get rid of this. Now, what we will have is the following. On the left part, if I, if I multiply by 2, and again use a distributive law of multiplication versus addition and subtraction, I will have x divided by 2 minus 10x plus, I will put it together, it will be minus 8. I multiply by 2 equals to 0 multiplied by 2, which is, now we are using distributive law again, 2 times x divided by 2 is x, 2 times minus 10, it will be minus 20x. And 2 minus times minus 8 will be minus 16 equals to 0. Using associative law, I can put parentheses around this. And I will have minus 19x minus 16 equals to 0. All right. I hope I didn't make any arithmetic mistakes. Um, well, how to solve this thing? Again, using the transformation plus 16, we convert this into minus 19x minus 16 plus 16 equals 16. Now, this is 0 using associative law. So we have minus 19x equals 16. And transformation is divide by minus 19 to get rid of this. And I will have x equals minus 16, 19. Now, I don't know why I have such a strange number. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe not. 
Let me just check. x plus 4 divided by 2 minus 10x minus 10 equals to 0. That seems to be correct. Now, uh, x divided by 2 minus 10x. This is 2 minus 10, right, times 2. So that would be x divided by 2 minus 10x minus 8 times 2. Uh, right. That's 0 minus x minus 20 and minus 16. Seems to be correct. Okay. Um, now, you see, I'm kind of hesitating right now because, again, the number is a little strange and uh, I have to check it. Um, not because I did something incorrect with transformations, but because I just made, I might made an arithmetic mistake. All right, well, let's try. Um, let's try to check it. If not, we will just have to do it from the beginning. All right, so let's put Minus 16 nineteenths. Minus 16 nineteenths plus 4. What is this? It's equal to, it's 19 times 4 um, will be 38, 76, 76 minus 16. Minus 16 plus 76 nineteenths, which is mm, 60 nineteenths, right? Now, if I divide it by 2, that would be 30 nineteenths. Okay. Now, x plus 1 will be minus 16 nineteenths plus 1, which is minus 16 plus 19 nineteenths, 3 nineteenths, times 10. So 10 times minus 16 nineteenths plus 1 is equal to 30 nineteenths. And now this is equal to 30 nineteenths. This is equal to 30 nineteenths. And there is a minus here. So it looks like we checked fine. and. Uh, Regardless of such a weird number, it is a true solution. It didn't make any mistakes. So, again, I was just trying to um, illustrate how simple equations, which present absolutely no problem to solve them, well, except some arithmetic cal cal calculations, um, actually are based on certain principles and certain theory of uh, invariant transformations. Now, the next problem will include non-invariant transformations, which are also possible uh, to apply in, in, in the case of uh, solving certain uh, equations, but that should be done very carefully. So, go to the next problem and uh, uh, we will uh, discuss this particular issue. Thank you.